With a project that contains both structures and properties, we're ready to learn a little bit more about how to manipulate the table contents here in Canvas. In this video, we'll take a look at how to sort structures, filter the contents of the table, save a custom view, and run a query for a specific type of chemistry. Let's suppose, for the sake of example, that we want to sort the contents of our Canvas project by molecular weight. To do so, we need only head up to the data menu and choose sort. This will open a window that allows us to tell Canvas exactly how we'd like to sort the table. First, we'll choose MW from the list for molecular weight, and you can see that it's possible to sort in ascending or descending order. Then we click the add button to sort first and foremost according to molecular weight. It's possible to sort using multiple properties, like you would do in a spreadsheet, but for this example, we're ready to click OK and sort the table. As you can see, the interface is sorted according to molecular weight. Next, we'll go ahead and filter the table. In this example, let's filter the contents of the table so that we only see compounds with a molecular weight between 400 and 500. To do so, we can head up to the data menu and choose Property Filter. In order to filter the table so that we see just compounds between 400 and 500 molecular weight, we actually need to define two criteria that must be matched, a molecular weight above 400 and a molecular weight below 500. At the top of the window, there are two drop-down lists and a text field that are used to select a property and the matching criteria. Here, you can see the options that need to be filled out to match a molecular weight of greater than 400. Clicking the Add button adds the new filter rule to this list. Next, here's what things look like after we add the second filter rule. One quick note here. In this example, we want to make sure the AND toggle is selected rather than the OR toggle. To apply the filter, click Run. You can also save filters if you want to apply them again in the future. And after the filter has been applied, you can see that the first row in the table has a molecular weight of just above 400, and the last row has a molecular weight of just below 500. Right now, you may be wondering where exactly the rest of our compounds have gone. The answer is that those compounds that were filtered out are still available for us to work with, but at the moment, they're just hidden from view. Canvas keeps track of subsets of compounds using what's called a view. The master view is whatever happens to be present in the main Canvas window. It's possible to save the current subset of visible compounds as what's called a custom view. This is something that's saved apart from the master view and can be hidden and then redisplayed whenever we like. To save a custom view of our currently visible compounds, those with a molecular weight between 400 and 500, we'll choose Save As under the View menu. This presents us with a window where we can name our custom view and save a short description of what the custom view actually contains. As far as the other options go, in this case, it's important to choose all rows rather than selected rows. Doing so will result in all currently visible rows being saved to the custom view. Choosing selected rows wouldn't have saved any rows in this instance since no rows are currently selected. Clicking on OK will save the view. By default, the option to open the view in a new window is checked. After saving the custom view, this is what it looks like when it appears in its own window. You've probably noticed that there's a lot of similarity between the menu bars and the master view and this custom view window. One important thing to be aware of is that there's a view menu in the custom view window, and choosing the option apply to master view will allow you to replace the contents of the main canvas table, the contents of the master view that is, with those of the custom view. There are two ways to open custom views that you've saved. The first is to choose Open from the View menu in the main Canvas window. The second is to use the Project View pane, which stores all of our saved views. 
you can double click on the view to open it in a new window or right click it to expose additional options. Finally, if you want to reveal all of the hidden rows in the master view, doing so is a very easy matter. Under the view menu, simply choose undo all view changes. Keep in mind that doing so in this case will also undo our previous sorting operation, which was itself a view change. Not only can we filter the master view in Canvas according to structure properties, it's also possible to filter or retrieve compounds according to their substructures. Chemistry filters and substructure queries are the tools in Canvas that make this possible. To use a chemistry filter, you can choose Chemistry Filter under the Data menu. In the Chemistry Filter window, you can edit the table to specify SMARTS patterns that you wish to see in your compounds, as well as the minimum and maximum number of times you'd like those patterns to appear in any of the compounds. It's possible to save and import your own custom chemistry filters, but one of the most useful aspects of this table is the ability to perform Rios filtering. The built-in Rios filters will filter out reactive and non-drug-like chemistry. Clicking on the Run button will perform the actual filtering. Here's what it looks like after I apply the Rios filter. If you're paying attention, you probably noticed that different compounds are now visible at the top of the table. And if you're paying really close attention, you may have already noticed that there's an indicator in the lower right-hand corner of the Canvas window. It tells us how many rows and columns are visible or selected, and right now, there are only 57 rows that remain in the table after filtering. Substructure queries can be performed by choosing Substructure Query under the Query menu. To search for compounds that match a specific substructure, you can either enter the SMARTS pattern for that structure and click Preview, as shown here, or you can import a mole file that describes exactly the pattern that you'd like to match. Clicking on Find Matches will filter the compounds accordingly. Okay, so what I want to do now is to take a look at sorting, filtering, custom views, and substructure queries within a live demonstration. Again, those of you who are feeling a little adventurous might want to skip this part of the video, but for everyone else, let's get started with a sorting operation. So to begin with, I'm gonna click on compound one to highlight it, and I just want you to keep an eye on this highlighted compound as we go through the sorting operation. I'll head up to the data menu and choose sort. This opens a window where we've got this list of properties in a drop-down menu. I'll just choose MW right there for molecular weight, and I'll sort this in descending order, and I'll click on add, to add this to the list of the properties that we're sorting by. We can sort by multiple properties if we want, but in this case, I'll just sort according to the one property, and I'll click on OK to run that sorting operation. And you can see that not only is the table sorted, but Canvas automatically jumps down to the location in the table where our highlighted compound now appears. So it gives us a little bit of context for what we were working with before, which is really nice. Here at the top of the table, we see large compounds with a molecular weight of just above 700, and we see the large size reflected in the 2D structures right here. And at the bottom of the table, we see small compounds, the smallest with a molecular weight of about 322, and these are the smaller 2D structures down here. Nice and easy, but there's an even easier way to do it, and that is just to right-click on the compound header, or on the property header, pardon me, and choose to sort by molecular weight. In this case, let's sort in ascending order. So you can see that we jump to that highlighted compound again, and at the top of the table, we've got our small compounds. Nice and easy. So the next thing I want to show you then is how to filter the table. And in this case, I want to filter the table so we're just looking at compounds that have a molecular weight of between 400 and 500. To do that, I'll head up to the data menu again, and this time I want to choose Property Filter. This opens up a fairly intuitive interface. I'll just choose MW for molecular weight from the list of properties, and at first I'm going to say molecular weight of greater than 400. 
and I click on add to go ahead and add this to what's called the filter string. The next thing I do is to specify a molecular weight of less than 500. And I'm going to go ahead and add that as well. You can see that this and toggle right here is reflected in the filter string. And it's just doing a quick or a simple Boolean operation that says filter the table so that this rule and this rule both apply. And only the compounds that meet both rules are going to remain in the table. I'll click on run to run this filtering operation. And Canvas asks if I want to save the filter in case I want to use it again. This is just an example, so I'll say no, I don't want to save the filter. And sure enough, we can see that here at the top of the table, we've got a compound with a molecular weight of just above 400, and at the bottom of the table, a molecular weight of just below 500. So at this point, uh, we've got these 89 compounds that remain after we filtered the table. And what I want to do is save a custom view. A custom view is just a state that the main canvas table, the master view, is in at any given time that we save and that we can go ahead and call up at any given moment in the future. To do that, I'll click on the view menu and choose to save as. I type a name for my custom view and I'll type a description. and I'll click on OK to save that custom view. You can see it opens in its own window once we've saved it with a menu bar that's very similar to the menu bar that we see in the main Canvas window. And I'm gonna dismiss that and draw your attention over here to the project view where under views, if I expand that toggle, I'll just right click on it and you can see that we can open that custom view at any point in the future or apply to master. And what apply to master means is to take that custom view and have it appear in the master view or the main canvas window. What I want to do next though is to actually unapply that custom view or in other words go back to the state that the, ta that the table was in when we first started out. It's very easy to do that. I'll just head up to the view menu and choose undo all view changes. So you can see that our highlighted compound is once again at the top of the table and not only that but we have compounds of molecular weight greater than 500 and compounds of molecular weight less than 400 and the sorting operation has been undone. Nice and easy again. So next I want to go ahead and filter by chemistry. The way that I'm going to do that, again, it's under the data menu and instead of property filter, this time we're choosing chemistry filter. It's similar to before where we can specify smarts patterns and click on run to filter the table. And we can also save specific filters. In this case, I want to apply a filter that actually comes with Canvas. It's installed with Canvas when you install the program and it's called Rios. And this is going to filter out compounds that are reactive or aren't especially drug-like. So I'm just going to choose that from the list of existing filters and click on run takes just a moment to filter the table here and you can see that of the 188 compounds we initially had we've only got 57 left in the table and it's removed compounds that just aren't especially drug-like or might have reactive functional groups. So I am once again going to head up to the view menu and choose undo all view changes. That will undo the compound filtering or the chemistry filtering that we just performed the very last thing I want to show you is how to perform a substructure query. In this case, I'm going to head up to the Query menu and choose Substructure Query. All we need to do here is just enter a smarts pattern or import a mole file that contains a substructure that we want to search for. In this case, I'll search for compounds that have an aniline group in them. And what we want to do is choose Find Matches. And you can see that every compound that remains in the table, we've got 184 out of 188, so all but four of the compounds actually have aniline groups in them. And you can see one right here, uh, another aniline group right here, and so on and so forth throughout the table.